The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 830 a.m. Thursday morning. As we speak, we're going to get weekly jobless claims right now. We'll see that number jumping up in a moment. Right now, you get the markets jumping to positive territory. S&P's up 13 points, trading at 2789. NASDAQ up 81 points, trading at 8675. We've got the Dow up 103 points right now, trading 23,494. All of those markets pulling back yesterday, this morning in positive territory. And we're going to see a reaction, I imagine, as we get the weekly jobless claims number coming out as we speak. You see the spike even since we've been on the air. You're talking about 12 points. We were positive by about five points in the S&P. We've popped a bit on those numbers. And let's see what we have going on. Here we go. 5.245 million weekly jobless claims. Expectation? was for about 5 million, so right in line with that number. That makes the four-week total around 21 million jobs have been lost. Last week, it was uh, closer to 9 or 10. The three-week total last week, about 16 million. Weekly jobless claims, 5.25, 5.245 million. They were looking for about 5. Market really struggles to figure these things out in terms of how do you know it's going to be 5 versus 6. We've seen some misses because we've never seen anything like this in terms of the analysis, but the highs overnight in the S&P, about 2.40 a.m. Eastern time, that high 28.06. We're only about 10 to 15 points away from that level right now, 27.92 in the S&Ps. Let's jump over to the other charts. We'll start things off with the Dow. You see the pop in the Dow, about 100 points we just gained on that weekly jobless claims number. The high overnight in the Dow, 23,647. NASDAQ 100, 86 right up near the highs that we had overnight, 86.92. We covered the S&P, 27.90 was above 2,800 at one point. You back things up to where we finished yesterday. You're looking at about 6 p.m. Eastern time, 27.59. There's your crude oil chart. Crude, quite a day yesterday, getting a low of $19.23. We're about a dollar higher above that level, $20.28. Gold contract pulling back a little bit on the weekly jobless claims number. Gold trading at $17.60 was up at about $17.67 a few minutes ago. And the euro US dollar under 109, euro trading at 108.91. In terms of what else we have happening in the market, jumping through equities, and of course we're going to see these headlines on the weekly jobless claims number. Morgan Stanley out with their earnings this morning. A dollar on one a share below the estimate of a buck 14 revenue below estimates. The CEO said the company navigated the quarter well in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic and that the balance sheet and liquidity remain strong. Tough week for bank earnings this week. You had Goldman Sachs holding up relatively well yesterday. Morgan Stanley with the market up approaching 1%. Morgan Stanley down about uh, 75 cents, maybe 2% almost on that. As I mentioned, Goldman Sachs quite a rebound yesterday to finish positive for the day after their earnings. This morning, up about a half a, a half a dollar. Bank of America not faring as well. Quite a decline yesterday. Going to pop a bit this morning. Citi also declining on their earnings yesterday. J.P. Morgan, tough two-day stretch. Going to pop a little bit at the open with the market. But you went from about 100, 100 on Tuesday morning when they had announced their earnings finishing yesterday in the 90, 90 79 for J.P. Morgan. Other stocks out there, BlackRock out with their earnings. Got to love earnings season, right, as if we don't have enough going on. So, yeah, 22 million is the total. I said maybe 20, 21, uh, 22 million total jobs for the four weeks combined on that weekly jobless claims number. BlackRock out with their earnings, 660 a share, quite a number, beating the estimate of 636. Revenue above forecast, BlackRock saw $35 billion in net inflows, despite what it calls challenging times, $35 billion in net inflows in 90 days. Profit fell 23% from the same quarter a year ago. BLK is their symbol. So they're actually in decline a bit from 443, looks like 440, but a little bit of volatility. We will see where the market really is when that market opens. 
Other stocks out there, Abbott out with their earnings. I was checking out that article earlier. Abbott posting a 16% drop in profit and suspends 2020 forecast. I'm not sure how you don't suspend the 2020 forecast, even if you're doing well. A company like Amazon or Walmart forecasting what you're going to do for the entire year. Very difficult when there's so much up in the air. Abbott posted a 16% drop in quarterly profits. Company suspended the full year forecast. Abbott has so far launched three coronavirus tests in the U.S., including an on-site diagnostic kit that can deliver results within minutes and heralded as a game changer by President Trump. Jumping over to Abbott shares. I believe it's ABBT. No, let's see. Abbott, where are we? ABT. Yeah, so there's some volatility. Made it all the way up to 95 from about 91 yesterday. I mean, look at this chart, right? This is a five minute, but put this on some context. Check out that rebound. How about a 50% pop from $60? We're back up to right where we were before the coronavirus collapse. Continuing down the line, bank earnings, Bank New York Mellon beating estimates by 17 cents a share, quarterly earnings of a buck 05, revenue topping estimates as well. Profits were up compared to a year ago as market volatility boosted its free revenue. The bank sharply boosted its provisions for credit losses to 169 million compared to 7 million a year ago. I was talking to friends yesterday talking about just the amount of billions some of the bigger banks were putting aside yesterday in their loss provisions, but B, as in Bank of New York Mellon, nope, not PL, not Bud Light, BK, uh, $34, going to open a bit higher, checking out the 15-minute, there's your volatility, made as high as $36.50, uh, that, that's strong earnings for a bank over the last 90 days. Square, Raymond James downgrading the moment payment company stock to underperform from market perform, so they get a downgrade saying there's a disconnect between real outperformance of the stock and the underlying fundamentals of the business. SQ, yeah, a little bit lower, right? From 61.38, going to open almost two dollars lower to 59.55. Costco boosted by 7.7 percent to 70 cents per share. Bucking the general trend in corporate America since the virus outbreak, while well, Costco not exactly dealing with the, the same uh, woes as corporate America in terms of having people stocked in the stores, buying everything they can stock up on. Warehouse retailers said it's been benefiting from Americans stocking up on household supplies. Costco, I happen to have a membership to Sam's, it's Walmart, but those big box retailers, definitely bargains that you can get in there. And putting this in some context here. You're right back up. You're going to open at about 313, the, the high before all of this started, 25, below 280 a couple of times on the pullbacks. Bed Bath & Beyond earned an adjusted 38 cents a share for the fourth quarter. They beat the estimate of 20, revenue exceeding forecast. However, same store sales fell, fell 5.6% for the quarter. Just before the pandemic shut down large parts of the economy, the company said the outbreak would negatively impact the results for the rest of the year. I imagine so, folks. Bed Bath & Beyond, um, I, I'm sure you can order items off of their website, but if you're ordering items, I imagine you're doing it potentially at Walmart, Target, Amazon, right? 444, you're gonna open at 515 on those numbers. Uh, so trending higher, but they are a company that needs physical traffic in front of their stores, whether it's even outdoor malls that they exist in and whatnot. Uh, tough one there for Bed Bath & Beyond. We're coming back from the program. We have housing stocks. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We have S&Ps positive by 16 points, Dow positive by 96, NASDAQ positive by 81. Jumping around to some of the FANG stocks this morning and quite a recent run for Amazon. And it looks like we could open again at all-time highs for Amazon. Close to 2307. You're trading up about $33 right now. That's almost 1.5% for Amazon, 2340. Not that long ago, folks, we were at 2000 so you've traded up $340 in the price of Amazon as that's a what is that uh, yeah 10 more than 10% uh, for that equity just since we were trading at basically on Monday morning jumping around some of the other fang stocks Facebook 177 Apple shares quite a run for the um, Nasdaq Apple shares looking to open three dollars higher as well was up at 289 Microsoft shares 174.69, and uh, we'll finish it out with our Google shares. 112.72. Google, uh, you look at Google compared to some of these other stocks. I was looking at this yesterday. I mean, not quite the strength that you'd want to see in terms of still almost $300 off of where we were trading at prior to this drop. You put things in context. Microsoft shares, you're only $19. That's 10% away from the high. Apple shares, a little bit more than that, I believe. Microsoft's pretty strong. 284, so you're about, and you're going to open at 287. So you're talking about $40 in a $327 stock. Uh, but Google shares, you just see the difference, 1262. And we were all the way up at 1532. As opposed to Amazon, quite the rebound and quite the, I mean, from 1626 to 2336. That's $700. We're up. Off of the low, $813 would be 50% on your money, and we're about to be $700 off the low. Not bad, making almost 50% on your money in Amazon shares since, I believe, March 23rd? March, 3rd, March 16th on Amazon was the low. In terms of what else we have going on, breaking down some of those initially weekly jobless claims, 5.245 billion, uh, billion, million, 22 million is the number total we're at now. Five million was the expected, though the most recent total for the week ended April 11th represented a drop from the previous two weeks. It still showed that the damage to the U.S. labor market remains profound. Um, you know, there is some 
what we're dealing with on a graphical representation. Weekly jobless claim numbers blowing up past every single record. In the span of four weeks, we hit 22 million. Um, never before has anything like this ever happened in terms of how quick it's happening. Hopefully you get that B rebound, because when you think about it, normally the record before for weekly jobless claims was somewhere around 670,000, right? So if we're talking about 22 million claimed, even if we were setting record after record for every week in terms of 667,000, that would mean about every four weeks, say you're dropping about 2.8 million jobs, give or take, every month. So to reach 22 million, when you're only dropping, even call it 3 million a month, you're talking about it would take nine months to hit the type of 22 million number previously and any other pullback before it would take nine months of what we just did in a month, right? Nine times um, that number, even possible. So just uh, staggering numbers for sure. We jumped, we covered Morgan Stanley's numbers to get into the exacts for them. Dollar one a share, revenue almost 10 billion, 9.45 billion. Wealth management was 4.04 billion. Trading equities, trading for equities, 2.42 billion. Fixed income, 2.2. Uh, the bank said in release that earnings dropped 30% to 1.7 billion, which is represented as that dollar one a share, compared with 114 company-wide revenue, 9.49 versus 9.73. Jumping back to those shares as well as well. Morgan Stanley, you see the action we had from 57 to 27 to 38.40. We're going to be a little bit lower this morning on Morgan Stanley at 37.47. Mm -hmm. Other stories out here I found a little interesting. How about coffee prices? I'm drinking plenty of coffee at home. I got my cup right here. Why not? There we go. Uh, coffee prices rally as coronavirus lockdown sees drinkers caffeinate at home. I'm actually surprised when I saw the headline, right? Because you think, okay, even if they're caffeinating at home, um, what happens to all the times that they were usually out and about maybe purchasing coffee, whether it's from Starbucks um, or the whatnot. But coffee prices have rallied over the last month as global lockdowns fueled panic buying by those stuck at home. I do have about three or four bags of coffee right now. Coffee, you find a bargain on coffee. Coffee is not going bad if you use it. Stock up on those BOGOs. Uh, benchmark New York Arabica coffee futures for May delivery gained 15% over the last month and are trading at about a buck 20 per pound Thursday. Analysts told CNBC consumer demand for coffee has not faltered despite the epidemic. That would make sense, right? So here we go graphically U.S. coffee futures year to date. And you see where we went in terms of down to a low in February 3rd of about a dollar. And we made it all the way up March 25th to a dollar 30. We're hanging. 20. Uh, and really, this is where things started to ex escalate, right? Beginning of February, even now, uh, we were at a buck 05 as of February 20th, as things started, started to come a little bit real. Interesting. 10 year Treasury yield, 0.6% ahead of that jobless claims. I was checking this out earlier. So there's your rundown of the yields. Now, we've got some movement, but nothing too crazy in terms of pulling up the 10 year ZN. And if we got some action on that jobless claims number, not really. That number coming out at 830, we were trading at about 139.10. We're back at about 139.09. So these yields, 10-year yield, 0.613%. The 30-year, 1.23%. Remarkable numbers, right? Um, and we'll see how that plays out throughout the day for those uh, as well. In terms of speculation and what's going on, you have BlackRock CEO... Larry Fink said Thursday the U.S. needs to increase its testing capacity for coronavirus before its economy can restart. Uh, we're going to still see elements of the disease increasing in other parts of the world. And until we have adequate, adequate testing, rapid testing, it's very hard to see how we're going to reboot in the next 30 days. It'd be interesting to see as we try and pull this economy back out, whether it's in the next 30 days, whether it's maybe June 1st, you make it through April, you make it through May, especially in Florida. Florida, different models showing whether it's a peak coming up in the next seven days to a peak coming up in the next almost 21 days to early May. Um, something to that degree and how we come back, but speculation abound, that is for sure. Checking out some other stocks who have had some action recently, always pulling up Disney to interested to see what they're doing. They had a pop when they came out and told the world that they had 50 million subscribers now on Disney Plus already. You make it up to 109 within the span of two days. We were back under 100. Uh, and now we're settling almost in the middle of that range, but you're up a bit with the market on Disney. Ride sharing companies, volatility there as well, pulling back Uber from 29 
to about 2750 longer term especially a company like uber you get into lyft you have a little bit more of volatility with the fact that lyft prior to this had said that they were not going to be cash flow positive until the end of 2021 uber prior to this had said they will be cash flow positive now they updated that statement towards the end of 2020 their ceo came out somewhere in a so weekly somewhere around the middle of march and told analysts that Uber is going to have potentially $6 billion with a $2 billion line of revolving credit. And up to, if things really got bad, they really, if they lost 80% of their business, they'd have $4 billion cash over the next year. Um, quite a rebound long term. We're going to be in self driving, self flying Uber, Teslas, and uh, we'll pull up Tesla when we come back. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the program. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed. And I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionics, oil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Markets hanging out in positive territory right now. S&P is hanging on to 11 positive points. That's four tenths percent in the green, 27.86. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jumping into a little shorter time frame chart, checking in on the VIX this morning. We got a little bit of an elevation yesterday, of course, with negative action. The VIX, though, towards the end of yesterday, almost made it back to 40. Currently, this morning, trading at about 41.49. 
In terms of what else we have happening, jumping around to some of the cannabis stocks, talk about some of the stocks that maybe have some long-term potential, if you're believers. Um, but I would be very skeptical of some of these companies. <clears throat> Just uh, And I am a long-term bull, even you know the biggest of the big canopy out there. You put it on a longer-term time frame, that is quite a tough chart. From April last year, $52 to nine. That's a niner there. We're going to open it above 15 this morning. But really pushing it back even the three year weekly, you see the decline from 59, some volatility. But since April, straight down, had some volatility. Beware, if I could say a stock I hear about a lot that I would not be investing in. It is Aurora. Aurora, I mean, check out that chart. Have, have you seen a, a chart that looks like this of a successful company anytime soon? We're talking about 52 weeks here. And that stock just went from $10 to 70 cents. Now, Aurora. They just announced, I'll pull this over, they're going to be doing a reverse stock split, 12 for 1, so that they get their share price back above a dollar, so they're not delisted. It's going to roll up our, their shares in a reverse split. Okay, that was a couple days ago. Um, that was, I believe, this bar right here you're seeing on, oh, no, that's a weekly. If you put this on a daily, you will see the reaction the market had even uh, to that news as we gap down. Yeah, it's been constant. Just be aware of that even when it gets delisted uh, back above that. Um, you know, the other way you could have exposure is uh, Constellation Brands from 104 to 62. Quite the rebound. Going to open a bit positive today, and they have a huge uh, investment in Canopy Growth. You will, of course, be purchasing Corona beer when you do that. So you better be a believer that that will bounce back, but I'm sure it will. Stay tuned, folks. Larry Pesimento coming up live at 9. I'll be back at 10 o'clock with Tom. Markets in positive territory. 30 minutes to go until the opening bell. Stay tuned, folks. Larry Pesimento coming up right now.